From high on the mountain, where the wind and rain play, Cloud Splitter's here for Ricky's special day. Moon in the morning, sun at night. Hey, Simon, you okay? I don't feel so bad. I'll tell you what, why don't you just, just rest it? Hey, you okay? It's cake time! Jack! <laughs> Hey, it looks like we might have gotten in the same thing. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> you remember Ricky's Aunt Irma? <laughs> sure I do. All the way from Florida and to celebrate the birthday, huh? And to talk about custody. Yeah. Happy birthday, Ricky. We'll make a wish, champ. He's allergic to peanut butter. I didn't give him peanut butter, and that doesn't explain Simon. Why, Richard? Oh, where's Simon? What happened? Uh, I don't know. They ate pizza, ice cream, nothing different from the other two. It's good you got them here when you did. Both boys are extremely dehydrated. Heart rates are erratic. I can't be positive until we get the results back, but from their symptoms, it appears that Simon and Ricky have ingested methylene dioxymethamphetamine. Ecstasy? None of the other children are sick or show any signs of illness. The lab is testing the food for the party. Well, Dr. Berry says the kids ingested the drug within the last five hours. Well, Ricky spent the night at Simon's. They had breakfast at Anchor Bay Restaurant and we drop off at the party. We have minutes at Anchor Bay right now. Yeah, Joe. Chief, uh, thanks for coming. Listen, uh, I'm going to be camped out here until Ricky wakes up so you're in charge. But let's make uh, what happened to him and finding those drugs our top priority. We're on. Thanks. Chief. Do you think they knew what they were doing? That they knew they were taking ecstasy? No. No, I don't, Ned. I know they didn't get it off the street. We're searching both homes. I think focusing on Ricky and Simon's our best bet. Yeah, maybe. That's a checker bag. How long have you been doing ecstasy, Madison? Excuse me, but what are you talking about? The pacifier? She uses it to keep from grinding her teeth while she's, um, what do they call it? Rolling. Ecstasy makes you real thirsty. Pacifier is just a joke. It's all just a private joke between me and my friends. Is the inhaler a private joke, too? Detective, we agreed to cooperate, but your accusations are completely unnecessary. Look, I know you love and trust your daughter, ma'am, but you are looking at a purse full of drug paraphernalia. You want to tell them, Madison, how you breathe in the menthol to dial up the high, really get yourself spinning? Kids use these to hide their tablets. Did your brother have access to your purse this morning, before the party? I don't know. It's not my job to keep track of them. It's a piece of candy. No, it's ecstasy made to look like candy. How many of these were in there, Madison? That's not even mine. Somebody must have slipped into my purse. If Simon and Ricky got into your purse, Mistook this for candy. The doctors need to know how many the boys have taken. Honey, if you know something about this, please tell Madison, her. Madison, answer the woman. There are only three pills. What were you thinking of, Madison? I didn't give them to him. I didn't, I swear. East Grove Mall security request assistance. Malicious destruction of property on the north side. Hey, 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 put it down. Put it down now. 
Put it down. Put your hands up. It ate my card. I put another one in, it ate that too. All right, Mr. Winner. Listen, mall security is willing to drop the charges as long as you're willing to pay for the damaged chairs. With what? I don't have any cash. I called the 1-800 number on the machine. It's not in service. Did you call the bank? There's no bank name listed. It's got to be a name someplace. Where is it? ATM's gone. It's a mask for I'm okay. You know about these things, Jack. What kind of damage are these kids looking at? Is it permanent? Well, my own son survived the brush with ecstasy. He was lucky. Ricky's strong, Clive. Guardiola rubbed off on him. Excuse me. I'm going to need a guardian's signature to admit Ricky overnight. I'm still listed as his guardian. He lived with me. I signed all his school papers. It's fine. I'm not arguing with you. Let's just get him admitted. Ricky's a child. How does he even get a hold of a drug like this? Because it's being marketed to younger and younger kids. This drug comes wrapped in packages that look like candy. The drug itself looks like candy. You don't know it's in your family until your child comes home and loaded. <laughs> Maybe you can put a time limit on this uh, dumb act of yours. Oh, look, man. We got a zero tolerance policy about drugs here, okay? Zero. Any kid gets caught with drugs off the premises. That's a very enlightened policy. I'm a very enlightened guy. So you're telling us that none of those kids out there are on drugs? Look, officers, I charge a cover and I sell water, period. Yeah, 10 bucks a hit. Kids dehydrated on X. You figure they'll pay anything, right? I'm providing these young people with a safe place to come and dance, have some fun. You know what they do before they get here or after they leave? Hey. Now, if you're telling me it's against the law for high school kids to drink water, guilty as charged. What time you got, Detective Page? Late, Detective Debrino, very late. Like, uh, past curfew late? Oh, way past curfew. Come on, guys, curfew, you gonna enforce that? You must have just got to the district, Mr. Z. The curfew for kids under 17 is midnight. We're just trying to keep the kids safe. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't enforce the law. Yeah, this is Detective Page. You send several units and a bus over to 518 Canseco Drive. Serious curfew violations, yeah. Sir, sir, the machine disappeared right under our noses. No banks involved, no record of anybody Chief. using space at the mall. Sir, we need to move fast on this and we gotta find out. Help over here. Look, there's a lot more on our plate to worry about right now besides credit card theft. It's not our expertise. Call Secret Service, turn over what you have to them. Yeah, but sir, we need to move fast. There's no buts. You just jump in and see what you can do around here. Come on. Oh, look, grunt work. Yeah, have Brander do it. He'll do anything. Get off the desk. Come on, go. All right, you two, whose idea is this? Just trying to rattle Xanadu's cage, Chief. Well, let's see if you can rattle some information out of these kids and make it all worth this. You got it. No, 
those were picked up in our raid. That's the tablet we confiscated from Madison. Hmm. We get a match? Yes, sir. I spoke to the DEA. The stamps identify the different dealers, but the tablets came from the same oven. Do they have any ideas? A guy from Amsterdam, everyone calls the Dutchman, manufactures the blank tablets, ships them to the States. The Cloud Splitter logo is new to them. Ballistics. Chief? Well, every gun leaves a fingerprint on a bullet that's completely unique. Let's apply the same principle here. Talk to Bodine. See if she can ID the machine that stamped the logo on the pills. Find the machine. You'll find the source of the poison. ATMs are the weak point of access in the banking chain. Anybody can buy a machine these days. It's the perfect foil. Unsuspecting people pump their cards and access codes into these machines, wrongly thinking that they're secured by Uncle Sam. Sounds like the perfect way to launder money. That's right. How so? Well, someone could fill a machine with counterfeit or stolen cash, then after it's withdrawn, be reimbursed with clean cash from the customer's banks. You ever think about joining the Secret Service, Ray? You definitely got the chops. We have a recruiting drive going. Thanks, Kyle. I'm doing exactly what I love to hey. do. So anyway, Geiger, uh, we just want to give you a heads up on the situation. We're on it already. It sounds like the work of a guy named Woodruff. Hey, I know this guy. Yeah, I pulled him over for an illegal U-turn maybe three months ago. You think you remember a face from that long ago? Oh, yeah, I've got a knack. You know, faces check in, but they don't check out. Oh, the, trust me, I'm telling you, I know this guy. Now, I could go through my ticketing receipts hey, and you... Don't sweat it. He'll surface, we'll get to him. Secret Service. I think everybody wants their job. I bet he's never even met the president. For all we know, this may not have been the first time he's been exposed to drugs. You think I wouldn't notice if Ricky was bouncing You're off the walls? You're not there all the time, Clyde. You still have someone to come in to watch him after school, cook his dinner? It's for the best. She's going to take him away, Jack. And I can't stop her. What's it? The original custody papers for Ricky. Second page, third paragraph from the box. Pursuant to item four, if Mrs. LMA Farmer would have come deceased before Ricky Alvarez's 18th birthday, custody automatically reverts to his paternal aunt, Mrs. Irma Coleman. It's legal. I'll assign it. Well, Clive, if there's a fight to be had, we'll fight it. Don't believe me, Jack, I want to fight, but it looks like this is what Ella wanted. No, she didn't want this. She didn't know what was going to happen, Clive. She wanted you to be Ricky's father. Come on, we both know that. Yeah, we're about to file adoption papers with Ella. So now it's too late. I'm going to lose him too, Jack. <laughs> One more time. All right. Oh, man. Okay. They used to make noise. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Whoa! Ah. A tsunami cloud splitter Yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Two woes, that's good, right? Oh, man, this is tight. And when Simon sees this... Wait, well, yeah, Simon's gonna be okay. You know that, right? Man, I didn't know my heart could beat that fast. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you something. You gave us quite a scare, young man. Did the doctor tell you what you took? He said ecstasy. I know I didn't take ecstasy. I don't do drugs. I'm not just saying that because you're the big chief. Uh -huh. Could you do me a favor? Sure, yeah, what? I'm going to Florida with Aunt Irma. Okay, well, you, you may not have to go. You know that, right? I know, it's just... I don't know. My room has a big house with other kids my age. I can ride my bike to school. She has a pool. She cooks good. And that way, Clyde won't be so tired. I mean, when he's reading to me sometimes, he falls asleep. I just don't think he's used to being a dad. So what's the favor? Did you tell Clive I'm going to Florida with honor? The hearts are stamped from the same machine. You can tell by the markings, all the indentations are the same. Now let's look at your tablet of ecstasy. 
See how there's a vertical line that runs diagonally across the lightning bolt, and then there's a couple of small chunks missing from the top of the cloud? You're saying there's only one machine in the world that could stamp this logo on this pill? If you can find the machine that stamps this logo, I can connect it to this tablet of ecstasy and we can get the distributor. It's direct link. I use the same ID number on all my accounts. Been doing it for years. Never had a problem. How many accounts, Mrs. Brown? Well, I... Excuse me. Sergeant Brenner, can I talk to you for a moment? As soon as I'm finished. Uh, would you excuse me? Just one second. This is not our case. Right. Look, Ray, Geiger and his Secret Service buddies are going to be looking at the big picture only. All right, I'm thinking of the victims here. Who was hit, when, where. I mean, if we comstat this, we no, can... No, uh uh-uh. We do nothing. Chief Nolan was very clear. All right, look, Ray, I heard you when you said you love your job. All right, but me, I want to be a detective. And if I can't pass the test, I'm going to do it by getting the chief's attention. All right, now, I can crack this case, and I'm not asking for any help from you. Now, you were saying, Miss Brown? They took everything, wiped me out. The bank's doing everything they can, but... I can't prove I didn't withdraw the money myself. I never wanted to be a burden to my children. Miss Brown, now... Mrs. Brown. Look, I'm going to do everything I can to find out who did this to you. Oh, thank you, detective. After all this time, someone's finally going to help me. gonna be okay mm -hmm. both boys are gonna be fine we're just gonna watch them a little longer if you want to worry worry about that one I know she could face up to a year in jail for possession of a controlled substance that's the least of her problems if her parents were smart they get her physical complete with a spec scan this is what a healthy human brain looks like the cerebral blood flow is normal even and strong Madison this is a scan of your brain And this final image is from a spec scan of a girl about your age who was in here last month. She had done ecstasy regularly for two years. She has the brain function of a 60-year-old who's had a number of small strokes. Her short-term memory is gone. This young woman was applying to colleges, and now... Madison, who did you buy the drugs from? Travis! Trevor's not in any kind of trouble, is he? We just want to talk to him for a minute. Trevor! Excuse the mess. I, I, I cater parties on the weekends in the neighborhood for kids. You know, birthdays, I bake cakes and cookies and make little snack party favors. One job isn't good enough to keep things going for the two of us. Trevor? Yeah. I'm Detective Page. This is Detective Debrino. We'd like to ask you a couple questions. About what? The business transaction you had recently with Madison Jeter. Uh, you got the wrong guy. I never sold anything to anybody. She says you did. Well, Madison's also stoned 24-7. Uh, she can hardly remember what happened yesterday. Hmm. Well, uh, I guess you won't mind if we take a look around. What is this about, Trevor? What does the Jeter girl have to do with anything? It's okay, Mom. Hey, look, search the place, man. I have nothing to hide. This is Polly. Did you make these? The candy. I buy all sorts of candy. I personalize them myself. The kids love the cloud splitter. Boy, that looks like a match to me. Grooves, the ridge patterns, they're identical. Hmm. So Trevor used his mother's machine to stamp his own ecstasy tablet. Science doesn't lie. Then we got him. Maybe. I don't understand. This is the smoking gun. No, what we have is a smoking candy stamping machine. Officer Bodine, did you find any drug residue in my client's candy stamping machine? It's easier just to play along. No drug residue, but candy. Mm-hmm. 
Officer Ferris, did you find any drugs in my client's room? No. I see. Your Honor, I move to dismiss. The prosecution's case rests solely on my client owning and operating a candy stamping machine, which may or may not have been used in the commission of a crime. However, there's no evidence to support it. No drugs, no case. Motion granted. You did say you found candy residue on the machine? Oh, absolutely. All right, tell Temple and DeBrino to bring the kid in for questioning. But you just showed we don't have a case. Well, you're out of Tell them to bring in the mother, too. Listen, you said we had a chance with a motion to dismiss, right? No, that is what you led me to believe. Fine. Right. You need a minute? No, let's do this. All right, so how do you want to play this? Good cop, bad cop? What am I, the bad cop? No, I just... You know, this whole temple versus the world thing is getting old, buddy. I got to tell you, your problem isn't your lawyer. Your problem is... Well, what was my problem? Never mind. Oh, no, Kevin, please, please tell me my problem. You know what? Like you said, let's just do this, okay? We know you get your product from the Dutchman. Oh, no. Come on, he imports the ecstasy and sets up your distribution system. And then you put your cute little staff on to see your customers to find you again. Sorry, fellas. I have no idea what you're talking about. We found the machine in your house. Ballistics matches it to an ecstasy pill that we already have in evidence. Look, guys. Did you guys find any drugs in my house? Oh, wait. Let me answer that one for you. No. Did you find any drugs anywhere around me? Again? No. You guys have nothing. <clears throat> Is that true? Yeah. Got nothing. No. Trevor, looks like this is your lucky day. You're gonna skate on this one. Get out. He took him. He took him. Who? Ricky. Clyde picked him up an hour ago from the hospital. We're supposed to meet him there, go out to dinner. And... Did you try a cell phone? A thousand times. He's not answering. Maybe you misunderstood. There's no Why? misunderstanding. He told me to meet him there. He took Ricky, and now I'm asking for your help. All right, all right. We'll find him. As you get older, you'll see. There are fewer and fewer things in your life you really love, and you're one of them for me, Ricky. You and Ella. Where are we? It's okay, buddy. Go back to sleep. Called his home office and cell and no answer. Yeah, keep trying. He kidnapped Ricky. What good is it going to do to call him? If this were anyone other than your friend, you'd be acting like a cop right now. We're talking about Clive. He loves Ricky. You think he's going to harm him? I understand how you feel. No, you don't. You insinuated yourself into our lives when Ella was alive and I lost custody. She's gone now. This is no longer your fight. I want you out of my family's business, and I want you to find my nephew. I don't expect you to trust me, but what I want is what Ricky wants. You have no idea what he wants. He wants to be with you. That's what he told me. I think Clyde was trying to say goodbye. I don't think he's going to harm him, and he'll bring him back. What if you're wrong? We wait an hour. Then I put out an APB. An hour. <sighs> yeah. Why do kids do this to themselves? Back in the early days of the space program, when the astronauts were coming back to Earth, there was this, uh, let's say, one, two-minute period when the heat shield burned on re-entry and any communication was impossible. So you just sat there in front of the TV set and you waited. It's out of your hands. They're either going to make it back safely or they're not. Raising teenagers feels exactly like that. Except uh, instead of two minutes, it lasts about eight years. <laughs> 
I look at this and I think of this Huntington's I'm fighting. What happened to me for no reason. And these kids, for fun, on purpose, I look at them and I see what might happen to me in the future. Only I don't have a choice. Brander. I know I'm not supposed to be in here, but... What's this? Robert Long, a.k.a. Dale Woodruff. I checked my receipts. He owns a recycling plant. He's got bins out all over the city. He's got the equipment to haul an ATM. He's got easy access to malls, businesses, and schools. You know, look, I'm not going to make this your problem, okay? Uh, this is something I got to do, so consider yourself off shift, off the hook. Any other ATM complaints beyond the one? Yes. You know, you were a real comfort to that woman, Phil. Professional detachment is what was always drilled into us at the academy. Bedside manner, never got a mention. I guess they kind of expected us to bring that to the game, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I called all the mall cops in the city, and mm -hmm. it seems our boy's been busy. Check this out. All the complaints match Long's recycle route. Brenda, you're a Say it. genius. That I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, sir, we can divide our shifts. Half on stakeout, half on patrol. We know you would prefer the Secret Service handle it, sir. But it started as our caller, and Phil put the puzzle pieces together. OK. You're going to be working out of the 6th. You're both going to need to report to the shift commander. Thank you, sir. What's my mom doing here? I'm sorry, Trevor. I uh, thought you were told. Told what? What the hell is going on? She's been arrested. For what? The cloud splitter. My mom's not dealing any drugs. Well, wait a second there, Trevor. Nobody said anything about drugs, all right? This is about candy. You see, cloud splitter is a registered trademark. It means your mother is guilty of felony trademark infringement. That's crazy. Well, it's a serious infraction. She'll probably do about five years. At least. You can't do this, okay? All she does is make candy for the kids in the neighborhood. Sorry, Trevor. No, this isn't happening. Okay, you gotta do something. Yeah, like what? I don't know, anything. Well, maybe we can do something together. We don't press charges on your mom. And you tell us about the Dutchman. Deal? Clive? Hold on one second. Ferris, I need your help in here. Where are you, Clyde? Driving, Jack, just driving. Uh-huh. How's Ricky? He's fine. I picked him up from the hospital. Clyde, Irma is very worried. I want you to tell me where you are. South by 95. All right, South I-95. I'm not coming back, Jack. Well, then pull over the side of the road. We can talk about it. <laughs> Why? What are you going to talk me out of? This whole thing isn't right. It isn't fair. What you're doing now is foolish, Clive, all right? Now tell me exactly where you are. Passing 118, I think. Just past 118? All right, take the next exit, get off. And there's a place called uh, Red's Burgers. I'll meet you there. This isn't your fight anymore, Jack. I gotta do this. No, I'm leaving right now. I'll meet you there. Ferris, you can a hold of Joe. Tell him where I'm gonna be. Call the Virginia State Troopers. I'll keep you updated. Yes, sir. got together, I was worried Ricky might complicate things. You know, I can't imagine my life without it. I'm gonna fight her, Jack. 
however many lawyers it takes, whatever it costs. Ricky didn't take ecstasy. It was an accident. And just because it happened doesn't make me an unfit parent. <laughs> Clive. <clears throat> Ricky wants to live with Irma. He, he told you that? Mm-hmm. He did. Once he's 11 year old kid. Yeah, he's a kid that's had to grow up way too fast. He wants to play, Clive. He wants to be with his cousins. He wants to eat his aunt's cooking. Huh. And every time he looks at you, he sees how hard it is for you. No, no, Jack. I, I can't let Ella down. And every time I look at him, you know who I think of? Ella. It's not Ricky we can't let go of, Clive. It's Ella. You want to know something? We can't hold on to her through him, Clive. It's time for both of us to let her go. Big Bill. He loves you. Okay, let me have a whack at this, would you? How do you get the ball from? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Ah! Okay, look. I would like you to make me two promises. And the first promise is I want you to be a kid. I want you to enjoy your life. Have fun, right? And the second one, I want you to write me, call me, about anything. You get a girlfriend, call me. Let me know how you're doing. Will you do that? Yeah. You promise? I promise. OK. Because with your mom, your Aunt Ella, your father, Ricky, you have had more tragedy in your young life than most adults I know about. And that's why I know that God has his hand on your life. He has got something special in mind for you, son. I mean, I just know it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be blessed with this many challenges. Yeah. Let me give you a present. This was your Aunt Ellis. It's a Louisville Slugger, Thurman Munson model, 30 ounces, 33 inches. It's a little big for you, but you're going to grow into it. And there's a lot of homers in this bat because I, I didn't need any. Ellis sure did. Let me see you take a swing. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. Yeah. I'm gonna miss you more. Detectives Zabrino, Page, and Paris have arrested Mr. Otto Van Olinde, a.k.a. the Dutchman. They have also arrested 13 of his associates, shutting down a major ecstasy distribution network. This network originated out of the Netherlands. They've also confiscated drugs with a street value of over $10 million. We're going to let the detectives who cracked the case answer the question. What did the pills sell for on the street? 
These tablets sell for between twenty and forty dollars. Hey, check these guys out. Doing press conferences now. Heard about the Dutchman bus, man. Good job. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Made a big score, huh? Take the props, man. It doesn't happen often around here. Uh, okay. Guess that means you're not up for a celebration beer. Yeah, sure. Let's uh go out, have a drink, toast to us. And maybe you can tell you what my problem is. Oh, you're just not gonna give up on that one, are you? Why don't you man up? You never once had my back on this shooting. What are you talking about? I've done nothing but try to help you on this. <laughs> Who was it who got Maria to recant her testimony, huh? Oh, yeah, right. Cashmere Brown, your girlfriend? Oh. She lied and got me thrown in jail. You know what? You never once thought about me. All you did was think about oh, yourself. What was I doing in that alley that night, huh? Having a party? I went there to make sure you didn't do something stupid. Because you were so filled with revenge, you weren't thinking straight. I was thinking straight that night, and I'm thinking straight now. No, you're not. You won't admit that you screwed up. trade seats. It's been an hour. No, it hasn't. Hey. Hey. Undercover, huh? Yeah, well, I have my contacts. Yeah. What, why are you... Honest. Hey, Louise. How's your mother? She's feeling a lot better, Phil. Thanks for asking. Is this the guy? You gotta loosen up, sweetie. Life's short. <laughs> what did you tell her? Nothing. Just, you know, pass the time. You know what? You spent all day yesterday here and your day off, didn't you? No, persistence, persistence. I never give up. You sure this is the guy's ATM? Yeah, damn sure. Beat my card earlier. You know, and I just, something inside. It's a feeling, it's a gut thing. Yeah. Probably the coffee. Is that a joke? What? <laughs> it strikes me that you're not the kind of guy that's got a lot of funny inside. That's hey, all. hey, 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 I can be very silly. I don't know why people always think I'm so serious. You know, I used to do stand up in college. <laughs> Get out. Hey, that was funny. Hey, what's this? What is that? It's a duck having sex. Alright, alright. Alright, the moment he lays his hands on the machine. Yeah. Hold it, please. Miss, watch out! Dear Chief, how are you? How is everyone at the police station? Boy, do I miss you guys. My Aunt Irma has a pool in her backyard. It's heated, so me and my cousins can swim in it, even at night. 
Sometimes you pretend the pool is a lake filled with monsters. My life here is very busy and exciting. I still have to take out the garbage, but there are more kids here, so I only have to do one chore. I had another birthday party at the beach, and I got to break a pinata. I miss DC and my room and my friends. It's hot down here all the time, and I miss winter. Simon says he's going to send me a snowball. I'm keeping my promise to you. I'm being a kid, and I'm having fun, especially with my cousins. They're more like my brothers now. They like to play tricks on me sometimes, but they're really cool. Take care of Clive. Make sure he knows I love him and I really miss him. <laughs>